Today we have updates on The Boys Season 4, The Strangers Trilogy, Maxine, and more all in one big nasty video. So let's get right into it, shall we? <laughs> Before we talk updates, I real quickly want to thank my patrons out there. Thank you so much for supporting this page. Without your support, I wouldn't be able to keep making these videos, and I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Please consider signing up for my Patreon or channel memberships, as it's the lifeblood of this page as I sometimes get demonetized talking about visceral horror movies. Thank you all again, and now finally, let's get into the updates. A full trailer for The Boys Season 4 dropped today from Prime Video, integrating some of the characters from the spin-off series Gen V, as well as showing how the stakes are higher than ever. The highly anticipated fourth season arrives next month on June 13th and is being described as, The world is on the brink. Victoria Newman is closer than ever to the Oval Office and under the muscly thumb of Homelander, who is consolidating his power. Butcher, with only months to live, has lost Becca's son as well as his job as the boys' leader. The rest of the team are fed up with his lies. With the stakes higher than ever, they have to find a way to work together and save the world before it's too late. The trailer looks sick, revealing that a virus has been created to take out the soups, as well as someone dressed as Black Noir fighting Butcher. The most popular fan theory right now is that Black Noir has been replaced by Vaught, as he was killed by Homelander at the end of season three. We'll just have to see what's up with that theory, as well as this soup-killing virus on June 13th when season four premieres. I am absolutely looking forward to it. Scott Chambers, the director of Peter Pan's Neverland Nightmare, has just announced over on Instagram that the film has begun shooting. A horror take on characters created by J.M. Barry. The post is a shot of a teddy bear on the ground at what appears to be a supermarket setting. Vince Knight, the cinematographer who shot Blood and Honey 2, is tagged, meaning he's likely the director of photography for this project as well. Considering that the plot description concerns a character named Wendy who loses her little brother to the evil clutches of Peter Pan, my guess is that this is the final shot of an abduction sequence. We learned from the Blood and Honey films that these guys don't pull any punches when it comes to gruesome kills, so I'm hoping that little Michael here stays safe until the end. We'll just see about that though. A few other random notes about Peter Pan's Neverland Nightmare is that we know that Tinkerbell will appear in the film shooting pixie dust like it's heroin. That's almost an exact quote from director Scott Chambers too. Jagged Edge Productions is looking for a late 2024 release on this project, as Reese Frake Waterfield told me in our most recent interview so i'm hoping that we'll have it ready for uh, the end of this year as well so, oh wow okay yeah hoping to have bambi and peter pan then um and then my immediate next one i'm probably going into is going to be pinocchio um and then after pinocchio still determining if it should be poo free or Poonibus what one's first. Megan Placido, who plays Wendy Darling in the film, will also be a main player in the Puniverse Monsters Assemble, the accumulation of every TCU film thus far. Every movie that's in the Twisted Childhood universe thus far has some kind of protagonist and antagonist showing up in Puniverse Monsters Assemble. So my guess is not only will we see Wendy Darling, we'll also see Tinkerbell and Peter Pan there too. Since this movie takes place in the same universe as Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2, we also know that characters can regenerate, so maybe deaths don't even really matter, just like in the MCU. They keep talking about bringing Iron Man back, and if they do that, oh boy, did I waste a lot of tears on Tony Stark in 2019. God damn it! Vin Diesel, whose real name is Mark Sinclair, is revisiting his breakout role of Richard B. Riddick for the upcoming fourth installment in that franchise, Riddick Furia. Production for the new installment in the Riddick franchise begins August 26th of this year. Director David Toohey, who has written and directed every previous installment, is once again back to do the same with part four. The plot description reads, Riddick finally returns to his home world, a place he barely remembers and one he fears might be left in ruins by the Necromongers. But there he finds other Furians fighting for their existence against a new enemy, and some of these Furians are more like Riddick than he could have ever imagined. Tui promises that after three movies, two video games, an anime production, and online motion comics, that in this flick we will finally dive into Riddick's origins. The Riddick movies are like a little underrated in my opinion. Just a little bit. The original installment, Pitch Black, is the best one by far, but I do appreciate Chronicles for the world building it does, and the Back to Basics threequel titled Riddick for 
feeling like more of a faithful continuation. There are no Empire Strikes Back or Wrath of Khans, but if you're looking for something in the same sci-fi subgenre, it's worth a watch. Something else that aids these three movies is having the same creator behind all of them thus far. They might feel tonally different from one another, especially Chronicles of Riddick, but they do stay consistent with the basic elements, making everything feel like it's in the same universe. Personally, I'm excited to see where part four goes. We might even dive into some prequel elements as was teased to us in that plot description. I hope filming goes well here that starts production right when Family 11, I mean Fast 11, wraps production this summer. Family, family, family. I still don't understand why Mark Sinclair thought it was a good idea to change his name to Vehicle Identification Number Diesel, but I too would lose a lot of brain cells after reading the Fast X script a couple of times. <laughs> That's so mean. I can't put that in the video, but it's so funny. The latest update on the Strangers trilogy has me backpedaling on some of my initial criticisms. Let's talk a little bit about that. As we inch closer to that May 17th release date for Chapter 1, director of all of them, Rennie Harlan, talks about how he wants to release a cut of all three films together after their initial and respective theatrical outings. During an interview with Variety, Lionsgate executive Gobert Aboud says a four and a half hour cut is being discussed behind the scenes. Rennie Harlan continues, saying it's in our heads. This is definitely something we want to do. We want to cut together the full arc. I am all about seeing the Harlan cut of all three of these movies packed together, maybe even with some additional footage. That might be total speculation at the moment, but there's huge opportunity for some extra pull here. You want to see what was cut from the previous chapters? Come to the movie theater for almost five hours to watch it. I've definitely been one of the many who has criticized the trailer for being too similar to the original Brian Bertino film, but I believe the filmmakers are looking at this first movie as the setup to a bigger story. Think about how Dune sets up part two that just came out. I loved Dune 2, but my buddies virtually had to drag me to the theaters to go watch it because I just was not crazy about that first movie. I wasn't really keeping up with that side of film news at the time though, and I had no idea it was supposed to be setting up the whole trilogy. That first movie is essentially just exposition. Now that I've seen part two though, I really appreciate part one for doing what it did. I'm predicting the Strangers trilogy is doing something similar. I'm probably going to be a lot more lenient with the strangers chapter one because it's seemingly setting things up for chapters two and three which i think once we've seen all three of the movies together then we'll really be able to make some criticisms and judgments about it right now though i'm seeing this wonderful passion from rennie harlan in this interview talking about wanting to release this big cut of all the movies that's completely insane i love it that has this strangers fan very excited maybe more for chapters two and three rather than chapter one but we'll just have to see i also have netflix's fear street trilogy on the mind right now that didn't wrap up the story from the first film until the very ending of the third one. I could totally see this first movie doing something similar like that in chapter three while also explaining to us who Tamara is finally. That also got confirmed today from our source Variety. I'm excited to see this trilogy hopefully depart into a new story, but my worries remain on how much they may explain. I hope the strangers still feel like strangers by the time the credits roll on that supercut. Ty West's Maxine is easily one of the most highly anticipated horror films of the year, right up there with Terrifier 3 and Alien Romulus. Today, EW shares a bunch of brand new photos from the film, and one even confirms a long-running rumor. In this first picture, we see Maxine at what appears to be the casting audition for The Puritan 2, the foam movie that is being made during the events of this film. I really like that a running theme in these movies about making movies is the idea of the X Factor. Some people have it, some people don't. It's a very superficial philosophy, in my opinion, but it's instilled in both Maxine and Pearl, who are blindly guided by it. And for one of those characters so far, it led to their death. The second image is of both Mia Goth and Elizabeth Debicki looking out into the distance. Not much to write home about here, but we do know that Elizabeth Debicki is playing the faux director of the Puritan 2 within the movie. Her name is hilariously also Elizabeth. She's taking a chance on adult film actress Maxine Minx to play a leading role in her upcoming sequel. Let's hope that works out for her. In picture number three, we have the illustrious Kevin Bacon covered in blood, looking like he's fearing for his life. The Baconator here is playing a PI who's looking for Maxine, likely hired by her Bible-thumping pastor father. I can't imagine that dad here or his communion is super thrilled to hear that his daughter is starring in a bunch of pornos. The director is also teased to us that Maxine is going to be a noir murder mystery. And from the trailer, we learned that our new killer has taken on the moniker of the Night Stalker. And just to nip this in the bud 
real quick. I don't think that Ty West would think revealing a Richard Ramirez lookalike in this film as our mystery killer would be satisfying. That would just be really off-putting and probably offensive to some people. Many X fans are banking on Kevin's character being our Night Stalker, but I think he's dead meat. This is not the first photo of him we've seen where he's either covered in blood or hurt. Just watch the trailer. And finally, we have this still of Sophie Thatcher's character putting a head cast on Maxine. For those who don't know, whenever they want to destroy a character's head in a horror movie, the most common method is creating a head cast of the actor and making a fake head out of liquid latex. It's a tedious process for everyone involved, but God does it look good. It's been a rumor for a while now that Sophie Thatcher would be playing a small role of the makeup artist for the Puritan 2, who ends up putting Maxine's head into a head cast. With this brand new still, that rumor has since been confirmed. Hell yeah! These are some really exciting updates and boy we gotta mark the calendar because pretty much every update from today's video was something positive. Which update from today's video has you the most excited? Leave me something about it in the comments below. I would ask you to subscribe to this page but it is nap time for old Jake. I am an old man now at the steady age of 25. So sleep tight, I hope the bed bugs don't bite. Not even waving bye to you or nothing either. Ugh! <sighs>